to say good afternoon and I want to welcome everybody uh, tuning in with us tonight and uh, I, in a way of announcements. Uh, just a couple real quick. Uh, don't forget this week is the uh, week of prayer for the international missions. And don't forget this, the offering for this coming Sunday will go to uh, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, the church's offering Sunday will go to it. Uh, if you want to give, uh, uh, other than this Sunday, this month of December, uh, you can write a note on your check or the envelope that you put it in uh, to designate it for the Lottie Moon Christmas. So don't forget those two things. Uh, don't forget uh, services this weekend. Uh, again, we'll still be online uh, this weekend. Uh, so don't forget that. 10.30 and 6.30. Um, so you be in prayer for that. Continue to uh, remember uh, all of our all of the requests that's on the prayer chain. Uh, continue to remember one another when we pray. I know that uh, there's many unspoken requests, and uh, I know many many of you that are watching and listening. Uh, you have requests. I have unspoken requests, and I ask that you remember them. Um, I know I, I haven't done this in a while. Um, and and hopefully we get back uh, some some type of normal. Uh, you know we can if you've got a praise, uh, you can um, you can give that uh, at the time for uh, prayer request as well. I I do having led into that, I do want to say I thank the Lord for answering prayers. Uh, thank Him for taking care of us um, uh, when we need Him. So don't forget those. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I know. Um, uh, Chris, did, he didn't get a chance to post um, the chapter in the book and the verse tonight that we'll be looking into, uh, but we will look into Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, and I'll give you just a few moments to get there, um, you know, continue to remember uh, Mike Ogle in your prayers and uh, his, his uh, new uh, role that he's doing for an, uh, in his church so you do pray for him uh, continue to remember Jimmy uh, in your prayers as well he's still uh, filling in as an interim uh, so do remember those two in your prayers Luke chapter 15 and we want to start reading in verse number 1 and then we're going to read down through verses 7 Luke 15 verses 1 through 7 then draw near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not he leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? When he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when, he come, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just, per just persons which need no repentance." Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for uh, this afternoon that you've given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand tonight and to preach uh, your message, Lord, here tonight, to preach the word, God. As we pray tonight, Lord, we know that uh, there are some that are watching tonight. God, they are so thankful, Lord, to be saved. They are so thankful, God, that you sent your Son to die on a cross for them. There are some that may watch tonight, Lord, or may watch in the future. Lord, they don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray tonight that uh, uh, through the Scripture and through the preaching, God, that they would see the need in their life to be saved. They would see that need, uh, Lord, just to uh, ask you into their heart and get forgiveness of, of their sins. And Lord, as we pray tonight, we just ask and pray that God, as we go forward and 
God, as we get into this part of year, that, Lord, that you would you just watch over each and every uh, one of us in the church. Be with our community, be with our country, be with our leaders. Lord, be with uh, the soldiers and all of those, God, that are overseas and, and not at home right now. Just, just uh, lift them up to you in prayer. Lord, as we pray tonight, we know that uh, in our church, Lord, there are many that are sick and many, God, that had surgeries and different illnesses and things that's come up in their life, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to help them in their recovery and bless them, Lord, in their lives, Lord, as we pray tonight. Lord, we, sh- we should be so thankful, Lord, for all the blessings that you've done and all the things, God, that you continue to do for us, Lord. There's not enough time in the day to give you praise and thanks and to be worthy of all the things that you've done. Lord, as we look into the scripture tonight, we want to be thankful, God, that uh, you sent your very best, uh, your son, for for each and every one of us. Lord, give us the words that you'd have us to share. Lord, just, just be with us and fill us with your sweet spirit. Lord, I pray that as everyone is watching tonight, wherever they may be, Lord, we just pray that, God, if there's a need, they just lean on you. Lord, we just pray that you comfort their hearts. Take care and watch over us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, before we get deeper into the message here tonight, uh, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of, I guess, what you call percentages uh, in this book of the Bible uh, that Jesus is trying to use in these parables under the Pharisees. The Bible says, if you notice in verse 2, the Pharisees uh, and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And they're basically complaining about the, um, I guess, the, the people that Jesus was with, uh, the people that he was sitting with, and uh, the people that he was helping, uh, the people, the, uh, the lives of those that he had changed. Um, I, I guess in their mind that they didn't feel that uh, these people were worthy or necessary. Uh, they were criticizing Jesus for uh, just simply being a friend, just simply uh, being with him. Uh, and, and I want to say this, first of all, uh, I'm not perfect and you're not perfect. Uh, none of us is perfect. Um, but I'm thankful that Jesus is with me. I'm thankful that Jesus, first of all, I'm thankful that he saved me. I've not done anything worthy of salvation. I I thank the Lord for his blessings. I thank him for the answered prayers. I thank him for the sweet Holy Spirit that I feel uh, right here tonight. Uh, In this building, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's three of us here. There's me and Chris and the Holy Spirit, and, and I'm thankful for that tonight. And, you know, the interesting part of that is wherever you're watching or listening, uh, you know, you you can count yourself and, and, you know, and the Lord's right there with you as well. But when we're talking about percentages, if you notice in the scriptures here, the three uh, parables that Jesus has given here uh, in this uh, great book, uh, he talks about uh, the 90 and 9. And if you look at it, uh, Percentage-wise, uh, he's talking about one out of a hundred. You get down just a few uh, verses, and it deals with uh, uh, the woman that has ten pieces of silver. Uh, so you're dealing uh, one out of ten. You get down farther in the Scripture, and you find that uh, there's a father, and he's got two sons. So what you're dealing with is one out of two. And I guess uh, the... I, I, I've got a title for Chris tonight, so he don't have to, he don't have to uh, stress too hard about it. But uh, I, I got this thought walking through a parking lot the other day, and uh, the Lord laid this on my heart, and I saw a penny laying on the ground, and it was amazing uh, where this penny was laying. It was laying right in the path of where uh, I'm talking hundreds and thousands of people would walk through on a daily basis. So let's just give it where it's at, the Walmart, okay? Uh, The entrance and exit of Walmart, there was a penny laying there. I don't know how long it laid there, but I have to imagine it had been there a long time. It had been discolored 
uh, from, uh, I guess, being old or just being out in the weather. Uh, the surface of it was scuffed from uh, either being ran over by a car, uh, stepped on or drugged by your feet or even a buggy. And this thought come to my mind, not worth much anymore. I can remember uh, as a kid or even in, in, in school, if someone saw a penny, they would, uh, no doubt, they would reach down and they would pick that penny up and they would put it in their pocket. It's amazing. You can walk around now and not too many people even spend time uh, to pick up a nickel or even a dime. Uh, but you let a $20 bill fall out and lay there, it's not going to lay there very long. I assure you they're going to pick it up. Uh, but when I was, this thought entered my mind uh, about that penny not, not worth much anymore. Uh, you know, when you think about the, the, the worth of a penny, uh, the cost of it, they, they say that it costs, uh, it costs more to make a penny than what it's worth. I, I don't know. That's just what uh, they say. Uh, but I know the, the worth of penny in a person's eyes anymore, it doesn't have much weight. It doesn't carry, uh, it doesn't carry the value that a, a $20 bill or even a quarter uh, anymore and uh, but when this thought entered my mind I was thinking of this scripture uh, you know when if I told you that uh, we'll just put some figures here in your in your eyes and and uh, let you let you look at it in this way if you had 10 uh, $100 bills if one of those $100 bills went missing uh, you would start looking for it if you had ten ten dollar bills, if you lost um, one of those ten dollar bills, you'd start looking for it. If you had ten one dollar bills, and maybe you lost one dollar, I'd have to I'd have to question there whether uh, most people would even search for a dollar. If you had ten quarters, if you lost one or two, you probably uh, wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't uh, look for those quarters very long. Uh, but ain't it interesting that in the eyes of God, uh, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a quarter, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a penny, a dollar, a ten dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill, a thousand dollar, whatever they make, uh, in the eyes of God, the price of one is the price for all. So uh, the value of that single penny uh, that people walk over that today and not have much worth in it. Uh, you know the value of that penny. It just doesn't. It, it just doesn't have uh, the the glamour that a hundred dollar bill would have. And what I'm getting at is the worth of it. I'm glad that in God's eyes that uh, you know that times in our lives we. Uh, I've I've heard I've I've written I wrote these down. Uh, I've actually heard people say these to me. Uh, either in a question or a statement. And the first one was, uh, why would God save me? And uh, the next one was, why would God spend time on me? The next one that I've heard is, I'm not worthy uh, uh, the trouble. I'm not worth the trouble. I've heard this before. I'm not, uh, I'm not worth the time and effort. I've heard this one. God cannot do anything with me. And when you, when you hear those statements that people make, and, and I, I'm as honest as I can be, I've heard these statements before, and I probably will hear them again. Uh, but there's people that, uh, no doubt, probably down on their luck, if you call it that, uh, people are faced with trials, they're faced with trouble, uh, you know, they're faced with the results of sin. Uh, sin will leave you bruised. Sin will leave you wounded. Sin will leave you in a in, in a worse condition than it found you in. Uh, and and sometimes these are the thoughts that the devil puts in our mind. And then we then we think that our worth is not much anymore. But I, I've got good news for you tonight. According to the scriptures and what we read in these parables, in that it doesn't matter if you're one out of two. It doesn't matter if you're one out of ten. It doesn't matter if you're one out of a hundred. It doesn't matter tonight if you're one out of a trillion and a half. 
uh, you're worth something to God. It doesn't matter the numbers. It doesn't matter how many there was. If there was only one, uh, God was going to send His Son to live a perfect life and so that He could live that life to reach those that are lost. Now, uh, turn with me for just a moment to John chapter 3. Uh, this is very uh, familiar scripture to us tonight. And I believe it's worth, it's worth reading tonight. In John chapter 3, uh, in, in verse uh, number 16, uh, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means anyone, believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the notice this, but that the world uh, through him uh, might be saved. Uh, and you say, preacher, what is the world? That is every one, every single person Jesus died for. He didn't die for a certain race. He didn't die for a certain people. He didn't die for uh, this country over here. He didn't dry, die for this continent over here. He he died for he died for the uh, race of man. Man, woman, boy, child, everyone he died for. And when you think about that, and you think about the cost of, uh, of that one son, I, I'd, read a, I'd, I'd read a story the other day of how that, uh, I can't remember where the, all the direct details, but uh, it went something like this. There was a, uh, it's, it's happened many years ago, there was a, a, a house fire, and, and this family, this, this, this uh, woman and, and husband, they had, they had a lot of kids. I, I mean, I, it was somewhere around uh, 19, 20, or even 22 kids or something like that. And there was a great house fire, and, and they managed to get every one of those children out of that, out of that house except for one. Uh, and they said that as the story went, uh, uh, you know, that the mother uh, and the father was just as concerned uh, over the one as they was all of them. Uh, and you say, preacher, if you look at it statistically wise, uh, that you know, in the way the world looks at it, uh, it should have been okay. And and let's put it let's put it this way. I can remember, and you 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 can go back in your uh, childhood, and I can remember that. I, I listen in in grade school and middle school. I did not do so good. So. Um, if if I, I my goal in school was a 69 and a half uh, because I knew that if I could get 69 and a half the teacher would round up and I'd have a 70 and that was passing to me okay and you know what so I settled I was settling at a 70 uh, when I got into uh, to middle school and great or middle school you know what I, the expectations went up so I shot for a 74 and a half okay and so because I knew it'd get rounded up to a 75, and that gave me a C, and I was happy with a C. And then, you know, you get in high school, and you're, you're wanting to strive to do more. And, and you know what, I just, I just wanted to get through, get graduated, and pass. That, that was my goal. And what I'm getting at is I was settling for less. But ain't it amazing that when race time comes around, and I'm sitting in front of my boss, and you know what I'm wanting? I'm wanting 100%. I'm wanting all of it because there's a great value on it. And listen, I'm glad that God today, He's never settled for less. Uh, he's not going to settle uh, uh, for 70% or 80% or 90%. Listen, God is a God of perfection. Jesus, when He died on the cross for your sins and my sins, He led a perfect life sinless life um, and you know what he he batted a hundred huh? he had a perfect average huh? ain't it amazing that even in our society huh, uh, when they pick uh, uh, ball players to go in the hall of fame huh, uh, you know what they're looking at huh? or they're looking at numbers huh? uh, you know if they've got a batting average over a certain percentage huh, uh, they can get into the hall of fame huh? if they've hit so many home runs huh? and you know what they can get into the hall of fame 
team. Uh, uh, you know what? If they throw so many touchdowns uh, or run so many yards uh, or have so many Super Bowl rings, uh, uh, they can get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, but you've got to remember uh, uh, they're not perfect. Uh, a person that bats uh, over three, uh, uh, 350 or .35, uh, whatever they call it, batting average, uh, you know what? They've got a good chance of getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, and the world looks at them and says, you know what? Uh, that's the best of the best. Uh, uh, what about that 70, other 75% uh, uh, where they struck out or, or got thrown out or whatever it may be? Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, we're dealing with uh, Jesus. You know what? He never struck out. Uh, he hit a home run every time uh, he come to bat. Uh, and when you think about that, uh, uh, God has never settled uh, uh, for nothing less. Uh, and you say, preacher, uh, uh, people today, they think they're not worth much anymore. Uh, you invite somebody to the church uh, and this is what they say. Uh, uh, you wouldn't like me if I come. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, the church is open to everyone. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, uh, He died for all. I've had people say, well, uh, I don't have the right clothes to wear. Listen, I, listen, I, I, I try to dress the best that I can, uh, but my dress does not impress God. Uh, it's not made to impress God. Uh, if, you're, if you're worried about clothes today, uh, listen, uh, uh, God's not worried about clothes. Uh, now, I know everything needs to be done in decency and in order. Uh, I can understand that. Uh, uh, we shouldn't look like the world in the church. Amen. Uh, I'll amen myself tonight. Amen. Uh, but listen, what I'm getting at, uh, there's, there's work things than that uh, and you say preacher uh, uh, people look around today uh, and they say they're not worth much anymore uh, uh, listen uh, the value of a life today is priceless uh, uh, let me explain to you in this uh, uh, the value of a soul today uh, is priceless today uh, and you know what the cost was uh, it was God's perfect lamb uh, it was God's son uh, and when you think about that tonight uh, you got to remember I'm now standing in the in the percentage of the 90 and 9 but long time ago I was the one that was lost I was the one that Jesus was after and praise being unto God he didn't stop looking he kept going for me I was thinking about this you know a person today they like walking where they're familiar they like going on trails where they've been before but do you know that when that shepherd um, uh, when he noticed that sheep was gone um, it didn't matter where it went um, it didn't matter the cost um, it didn't matter how high the hill he had to climb um, it didn't matter how far down he had to go um, it didn't matter how far um, he had to cross that old creek um, he went wherever that sheep was at uh, because he had a love for that sheep uh, even though it had strayed off now think about this. If sheep were, if we valued them like we do money, some of us wouldn't spend the time of day to get a penny. If we valued them like a $100 bill, we'd tear the house apart trying to find that $100 bill. I would, okay? I'll just be honest with you. But you know, the price for one is the price for all. And when you think about that value, you cannot put a value on it like you can when you think about it about being a child. I love my three children. I love them with all my heart. But I'm here to tell you tonight I wouldn't give one of them up for nothing. I wouldn't give one of them up for all the money in the world. I wouldn't give them up for all the popularity that the world has to offer. I wouldn't give them up for anything. You know why? It's because they are precious unto me. And you got to remember that love that you and I have for our children. Um, you know what? It's a love that God has um, uh, for His Son. Uh, but you got to remember uh, uh, we as God's people uh, uh, we tonight as sinners um, and you know what? I'm saved by the grace of God uh, uh, but I'm a sinner in that. Uh, but you got to remember we were made uh, in the image of God. Uh, we are God's creation tonight. I say that for this reason. There are several things in my life that I've actually made 
and I'm proud of them, okay? And what I'm getting at is it seems to me that if, if, if you're a painter and you're the type of person and you paint, you know what, when you paint a painting in that, you hang that thing on the wall because you want everybody to see what you've made. It's because you're proud of it. It's because you've put love and you've put time. You've done all that investing into that painting and that and you're proud of it. What if, what if you're a person that's a sculptor? What if you're a person that, 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 that's a builder? What if you're a person that makes uh, crafts and things like that? You make those crafts uh, and you put them out on display and you're proud of them. You want people to see them because you've put love, uh, you've put time, uh, you've put money, you've put an investment in, in those creations and that, and you take care of them. Listen, uh, uh, God has poured out His love into the world today, into people today. He's poured out the best that he's got. I'm thankful. Even though I was that one that was lost, he got in pursuit of me. There was one time, this happened a few years ago, I was over at Daddy's house and I was sitting on the porch and, and this guy comes streaking by the road in a car, in a, it was a truck, it was a pickup truck. And I mean, he come through there flying. You could hear him going around the corners. And you know what? You could hear him turning. You could hear the wheel squealing with every turn he made. He got down to the he got down to the stop sign and went to turn left. And you know what? He never even slowed down. All you heard was tires squealing. And then you could hear him, you, you heard him turn right once again, and you could hear him peeling off. Then all of a sudden here comes a state trooper driving by the house. See, that state trooper was in pursuit. Of, of that guy evidently he was speeding or done something and he's running from the law okay and needless to say this the guy got away from him the state trooper didn't know which ways he turned he didn't know which way he was going but listen the eyes of a good shepherd are on us no matter where we're at no matter where we're going because see, he's got a place from on high that he can look and he can see. And you know what? If I'm going to have anybody to look after me, you know what? I want Jesus looking after me. Amen. Now, you know what? In in my family, in my in our in our community around us, and that we've got people today that are lost. And you know what? Jesus knows exactly where they're at. And you say, preacher, how are you going to reach them in that? Hey, we'll reach them any way we can. But the most important thing, if we pray and lean and turn them over to God. Listen, Jesus knows right where they're at. They can run as far as they can, but it's going to come to the point in time in their life they will have to make a decision. Think about this. The end result of all three of these parables that Jesus gave us with the 99 sheep with the one piece of silver that's lost out of the ten, with the one son that's lost out of the two, if you notice at the end when they're found, there's great rejoicing. It's a celebration because what was lost is now found. The Bible says in verse 9, And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. I'm expecting great rejoicing. You know, our country today needs a revival. Our state needs a revival. Our county, our community, it needs a revival. You say, preacher, it's hard to have revival when you... When you can't gather in like you did before. I understand that. But you've got to remember the common denominator is Jesus. If he can be with me here. If he can sit with Chris back there. He can sit with you wherever you're at. Where, wherever you may watch or listen to this. Guess what? He, he knows where you're at. He knows the needs in your life. Most importantly in that. He's not just someone that knows a little. He knows everything. It's not just that he knows everything. He knows what to do. It's like going to the doctor sometimes, you know. They, they can check you uh, upside down. I, I mean, you know everything about you and look at you and say, I don't know what's wrong. 
But Jesus knows everything. Let us pray tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful and beautiful service, God, that you've given us uh, here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for always taking care of us, Lord. I'm so thankful tonight that, God, I know that there's probably times in my life people didn't put much value on me. I know that through the actions and through the things that I've done in my past and, and in my life, God, it just just didn't seem like there was a whole lot there. Just didn't seem like people would care enough. Just like didn't seem like people would love enough. But Lord, just like that old penny that was just laying in the laying into the doorway when somebody would walk over it and not think much about it. God, you saw the price and you saw the need in my life. Lord, I'm a changed man today because of what you've done. I'm so thankful, Lord, to be saved. I'm so thankful, God, uh, that, Lord, that you saw fit. Lord, not just to send your son for everyone, but, God, I believe you sent him for me. And I believe you sent him for everybody, God. And I know tonight that there may be someone that's watching, Lord, that needs to be saved. There may be someone tonight, God, that they are saved, but maybe they're just out of your will. God, maybe they just feel like they can't be a help to the church anymore. God, maybe they can feel like they can't be used of you anymore. Lord, I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here, I can testify right here tonight that, God, you can use anybody. Lord, if we'll just pour our hearts out and just open our lives up and, and God, just let you uh, come in and do the work, God, you can use anybody. And, Lord, as we pray tonight, uh, we want to thank you for everything that you've done. God, we want to thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we ask that you just continue to uh, be with the church and be with our community and be in our, our church family. And, Lord, I know that there is so much, so much sickness going on around us and uh, people are getting sick and some are dying and some are being hospitalized. And, and God, I know some recover just, just as easy as others. And I know some, some people have a battle with it. Lord, I know that there's some that's lost jobs and, and Lord, they've lost uh, money and income and maybe even their homes because of the pandemic that's been, going, that's been going on. But God, you're greater than any pandemic. You're greater than any virus. God, you're, you're greater than anything, Lord, that I've ever met or ever known. Lord, we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't forget our services uh, this Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning or and Sunday night, online services at 1030 and 630. I ask that you do pray one for another and continue to pray for uh, the virus. And maybe uh, maybe we can get our number, the numbers going back down in the right direction again. So good night and God bless. <laughs>